Hello, my name is Hartland Brown. I'm a solutions architect at Snowflake, and I'm here today to prevent our new Data Quality Manager app. This app was developed so that you can use Snowflake's native DMF functionality with the interface to make the process a little bit easier. And we've also included a couple of custom features as well as a couple of pages to help you analyze the results of those data quality checks. The first thing you should do is hop over to the GitHub and download all the files, of course. And inside of the GitHub, you'll find an install.sql file. If you walk through that file, it'll show you all of the different SQL you need to set up uh, the actual application, as well as uh, the stage that it will create and where you should drop all those files. Once you have that done, you can hop into the streamlit underscore app.py and look for this st.sessionstate.databases variable. So this is going to be where you add all of the databases that you'd like the application to have access to. We're doing this so that you can't just randomly uh, grab any database if you're a low-level user and you aren't supposed to have access to some of the other tables inside of Snowflake. Uh, and it also helps to make sure that the application itself is running a little faster since if we're querying the whole Snowflake database for hundreds to thousands of tables, if you've got a really large uh, environment, then this will help that performance. And once you've got this all set up, you can hop over to the Data Quality Manager app. So the first place it will dump you at is the notification page. Yours will appear blank, but I'm just going to talk about what it'll look like when you've got a couple of checks scheduled. Uh, this page is going to show anything that's triggered anomalies or alerts or anything of that nature based on thresholds you set. Um, and once they show up, you can get the runtime, the name of the check. If you want, you can actually filter through the job names to get just the check you're looking for, as well as a start and end date. And then we've also included a little bit more detail. If you click show more, this will pop up some information about what the job was, what uh, columns it was checked on, and then even a little bit of an analysis of the results. Now, to schedule your first check, hop over to the data quality checks page. We've got four different checks that we're including in this package. The first is a column value check. This is going to check for whatever columns that you pick the individual values within that column. So each of those values is going to get a count, and this is a very good tool to monitor maybe primary keys to make sure you don't have any duplicates or anything like that, as well as uh, just monitoring for explosions and value in general to make sure that your data isn't being messed with in any way. Next, we're going to have all of your native Snowflake checks. We give you two options here. You can either scan the whole schema, uh, in which case it'll just bring up all of the tables that you have in that schema. And you can configure table by table. Or you can, of course, do a single table. And once you click the columns that you want to check, you just grab all of the different checks that you'd like to do, as well as setting a threshold for each of them. The third kind of check we have is anomaly detection. This is not the native anomaly detection that Snowflake has in your SnowSnite UI, but uh, it was developed by our AI team here on the Solutions Innovation team. And it allows a couple of other features. You can add SQL filter conditions, and it also helps to specify partition and record ID columns so that you can get a little bit more of a fine-grained anomaly check going on. And the fourth and final check we have is the non-statistical data quality check. So what this is going to do is check tables against other tables with all of the same kind of checks that we were including in the other checks. So this is great for comparing tables across pipelines to see if there's been any kind of drift as your data migrated, as well as checking your data against any kind of historical record you might be keeping to make sure that nothing has changed over a period of time. So once we have decided our check, I'm going to do a column value check just because it's simple. I'm going to hop in, choose my table, pick a column. You can do more than one column. I'm just going to do one for this test. And then click Schedule Check. So when you're here, you can check out um, the Schedule Check page. Basically, all it's going to do is allow you to verify, or sorry, to specify the name, warehouse size, frequency, and label so that we can track the different jobs of that task that's made to constantly run the DMFs in the background. 
For Snowflake native qual uh, quality checks, you can actually schedule them directly on a table. But we're calling these unmanaged checks. Uh, this will only allow you to choose the frequency. And if you do do it this way, we will not be able to actually track the data through the application. We're going to be tapping on an event table that Snowflake has specified instead. The last uh, setting you can do is you can either schedule the job or not schedule the job. If you don't want to schedule the job, that's a great way to just create tasks, jobs that you can run in an ad hoc manner rather than on a given schedule. Once you've created your first check, hop over to the scheduled checks page and they'll all show up here. So you can search through them if you want to. So if I'm doing search for any of these, that helps you find your checks a little bit faster once you get to the point where you've got many, many checks. And you can also run those checks ad hoc if they aren't an unmanaged check. Here you can see that we warn you if it is and disable the button. And then we can also hop into the edit page. This is going to look exactly like the schedule page. All this is going to do is allow you to change the name, the warehouse size, frequency, or label of an already created uh, job, as well as start or stop that job. Once you've created all of your tests and checks and everything, you're obviously going to want to view the results. If anything happens that creates an alert, of course, you're going to want to go to the notification page. However, for the other kinds of checks, uh, you can hop into either manual DMF metrics, which is going to show metrics for both the manual scheduled checks for Snowflake DMFs, as well as all of those uh, column level metadata, metadata metrics. So in here, if we hop into any of these, it's just going to show based on what you're doing. Um, you, you check your name test, you pick the column that you want to look at, and then the check on that column and it's just going to give you what those checks have looked like over time. Obviously, there are no nulls in this column for me, and it's re remained stagnant for quite a while. Similarly, if you hop over to column level metadata checks, you can hop into any of these tasks. It'll show you a little bit of basic information, and if you click Show More, it'll actually bring up your column, and then the value that you'd like to check, and then similarly, the amount of the count in that value over time. Again, my st data is pretty stagnant, so there are no issues with this data. A great way to use this page is if you do notice something come up on the notification page for either a Snowflake DMF check or a uh, column level check, you can hop over here and just get a little bit of an idea of when the date of that variation occurred. The last page that we have is the Table DMF Metrics page. This is a similar page to the manual DMF metrics, but this is for Snowflake native checks that you've scheduled directly on a table. Since we aren't keeping track of those, it's in a native Snowflake event table, and we're just querying that table to get any of the failed expectations. Here you can see that I've got one that I'm running on a table name called test data address, column street address, and I was running a unique count. It found 1,500 issues, and it does show you over the last 14 days how that's been going. I haven't corrected any of these issues, so again, it's remained stagnant, but it does still keep that alert. It also gives you when it was last measured. And then if you want, and you want to just say, hey, I'm not actually getting a lot of failures, but is my stuff running? You can actually click expectations to all, and this will allow you to roll through and check everything that's run. As you can see, most of the time my data is perfectly fine, but... I do have a couple of issues. And then if you really want to just kind of parse the stuff yourself, you can sh hop down to show metrics history, and this will just show you everything that's in that table over a long period of time. And that's it for the data quality manager. If you have any issues or you find anything that you'd like to request as a feature within this application, please leave a comment or a task in the GitHub and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much. <laughs>